All right, guys, it's time to go ahead and assemble the bottom end of my 2001 Raptor 660 case. I've got both of the case halves already cleaned up. All of the threads have been tapped because they had so much gasket maker in them. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Now for the right hand side of the case, I'm going to be installing the strainer gasket along with the cover gasket here. And here's the part number if you need it for reference. And it goes on here just like this. Now I can go ahead and install the oil strainer. This has been cleaned out and I put a little bit of oil in it. Then the two screws to hold it down. And now for the cover, which has two little dowel pins on it, which face towards the front of the engine. And then the screw for it. And all three of these bolts are supposed to be torqued down to 5.1 foot pounds. And lastly, before we put the sealer on and put the two cases together, just make sure that you have the O-ring and the dowel pin on the left-hand side of the case down here. And now I'm going to go ahead and prep the surfaces. Again, I've already cleaned these off, but I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of brake clean on both sides, wipe them down real good, and I'm only going to apply sealer to one side of the case. All right, now all the gasket surfaces are prepped and ready to go. Now, according to the manual, we have to apply the gasket maker on the outskirts, obviously, where the cases are going to meet, and this little passageway right here in the middle, and the little overhang up here as well. Looking at the diagram on the screen, just make sure that you follow along with that. I'm going to be using black RTV because this is the best one for oil resistance. Uh, the only tube that I have left is from Felpro, and I've used it a few times, and it seems to do me pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on this as well. All right, now that the gasket maker is on all of the surfaces that it needs to go, I'm going to go ahead and double check and make sure that the transmission is still in neutral, which it is. I've got, again, my dowel pin, my O-ring ready to go. I've got the shafts cleaned up because these bearing surfaces need to be dry because they're pressed on. So I've got this dried up and I've got the inside of the bearings cleaned up with some brake clean and they're ready to go too. So now it's time to go ahead and tap both of the cases back together. Now before you torque any of these bolts down, you want to make sure that the transmission will still actually rotate. It tells you to shift it, but you can't shift it unless you can really reach your fingers in there and move the shift drum. So just make sure that whenever you're turning this that your gears still move in either direction. And again, if I'm holding the shaft, the drive shaft, then it still stays in place. So that still means that it's in neutral. And obviously when I turn it both ways, it still rotates. So I can go ahead and start torquing these down. And also for every single one of these bolts that I'm going to be putting in, obviously there's gasket maker all around all the holes. So to ensure that I'm not torquing these down with gasket maker in the hole, I like to put it, obviously this is not the right one, but if I put any of them in any of the holes down on the bottom, I put them in, pull them out, and then pull the gasket maker off the end of it, wipe it down, then put it in. That just ensures that I'm not cramming in gasket maker and getting an incorrect torque or even actually pulling the threads. And now we need to torque down this side's bolts to 7.2 foot-pounds and make sure that you do it in a crisscross sequence. So start on one side and then start on the other side and just make your way across. And now the same thing for the other side. I'm going to go ahead and just start putting in some of these bolts. Just put it in, pull it out, rub the gasket maker off of it, and then put them in. And these ones are also at 7.2 foot-pounds. So since a lot of the stuff was taken off my four-wheeler, according to the manual, there should be two of these little hooks on here, which they call the lead guides. So I have two of these, which one is here on this bolt, and then I have one down here on this bolt, and then I also have one of them, which they say is the hose guide, which I'm assuming is supposed to be for the carburetor overflow holes. That's where the manual says to state them, so I guess if you need to know where they go, that's where they go. All right, moving along, I'm going to go ahead and put in the speed sensor gear. I'm just following the manual in order here. Starting off, I need the first circuit clip to go on the drive shaft and using some snap ring pliers. And it goes into second groove on the shaft. Then you have the speed sensor gear, which lines up with the notch on the shaft. Then you have the warped washer, then a regular washer. And lastly, the last snap ring. 
And you want to double check to make sure that that snap ring is actually in the groove because it's kind of hard to compress that warped washer with the washer on top of it. So just ensure that your snap ring is all the way inside the groove all the way around. Moving along to the shifting mechanisms here, we have this segment that has a little indentation here for the shift drum. It just sits on it, flush, like so. And then the bolt for it goes right in the middle. And it's torqued down to 22 foot-pounds. Now, if your shift guide has fallen apart like mine has whenever you're taking it apart, it's not that bad to put it back together. First, you want to start off by taking your shift guide and your shift lever and putting it on like so and letting it rest there. Then you take your spring and the paw pins on top of it and stick it down inside the holes of the shift lever. And the paws are not symmetrical. You have one that's a rounded edge and one that's a flat edge. The rounded edge goes towards the top. So whenever you stick it in there, it'll sit in there just like this. So once you got that in there, you can go ahead and move the shift guide back a little bit. So this can push forward and now it's locked in there so it's not going to shoot out. Now to work on the other side. And just like that, I got both shift guides in there, and now it's ready to go ahead and get installed in the engine. And now to take the shift guide and the shift lever with the dial pin facing outwards, and go ahead and lower it down. Just like so. And now for the bolts, which the manual states to put some thread locker on, so I'm going to be putting some thread locker blue on there and torque them down to 7.2 foot-pounds. Now for the spring and the lever, just make sure you have your bolt in there along with the collar on the back side of it, with the indentation sitting inside of the lever. And what you want to do is go ahead and mesh the spring to the dowel pin on the inside of the case. Then make sure that the lever meshes with the segment. And then once it does, you can go ahead and start screwing it in. And also torque down this bolt to 7.2 foot-pounds. Now before I go ahead and install the shift shaft, I want to make sure that I install the collar on my shift lever here. So just remember that little collar. And also, even though this is a brand new shift shaft that I ordered, it did not come with the washer. So just ensure that when you're installing your shift shaft, you have your spring, your collar, and that you have the washer on it. And then you can go ahead and slide her on through. Now, if you need to, you can get you a bigger screwdriver. Stick it in here and separate the forks just a little bit on the spring so you can actually slide it on there just like so and now i can go ahead and just start pushing the shift shaft through just a little bit more and also ensuring that the shift shaft is sitting over top of the collar now it's time to go ahead and install the oil pump i went ahead and checked everything over and everything seems good on it so first things first i'm going to go ahead and put the o-rings inside of the case there's two of them here and here's the part number if you need it for reference and i'll also have the gasket for the oil pump there's that part number if you need it for reference. And now before the oil pump gasket, I'm going to go ahead and take off the oil pump gear, which takes the snap ring. Now I can go ahead and install the gasket. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a bolt in so it'll hold the gasket in place while I'm trying to put it in. And the easiest way to know which way is supposed to be facing upward, the letters are obviously going to be facing towards you, which lets you indicate that that is facing up. But you also have the bolt hole and then you have two oil holes right here at the bottom that's just a good indicator of telling you which direction this thing is supposed to go in so now since i've got the bolts in there i know that this is lined up i want to go ahead and start slowly pushing this down on as i'm tightening these down i am going to go in a little bit of a circular pattern so i get one in just a little bit and then go to the next one just to make sure that i seat this properly and to torque these down to 7.2 foot pounds And then to go ahead and install the oil pump gear back on, again, that this thing has a little bit of a notch on it. Just line that notch back up, push her on. 
And then the snap ring, make sure that's pressed all the way on. Still spins pretty freely. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and start with the balancer. I'm gonna start with the little key. Make sure that's sitting in there flesh. Then taking the gear with the tapered part facing towards the other side. And then the lock washer, which this is a brand new one. There's a part number if you need it for reference. And it goes on facing with the tab into the gear. Just like that. And now the nut for it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the primary gear, starting off with this washer, then the key, then this next washer that actually has an indentation for the key, and now the two gears, which as you can tell, it will ride on the key as well. It has a little punch mark on it as well, which will line up with the punch mark on the balancer. So when putting this on here, you do wanna line up the key. And now in order to line these up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the balancer as close as I can right there and also turn the crank so I can go ahead and then mesh the two gears together just like that the two punch holes line up where they should and just an easy way to test this out you can go ahead and just spin the crank and make sure that it doesn't collide with the balancer and now for a brand new lock washer again part number if you need it this one also has a tab that'll fit inside the gear. And then the nut for it. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and tighten this until I get it inside the four wheeler chassis because I don't have any way of holding this down to torque these to their high values. So now that I have the engine inside the chassis, I can go ahead and start torquing the balancer gear and the crankshaft gear down. And you wanna go ahead and do this before you install the clutch basket because the clutch basket will sit right in front of this nut and you can't actually access this nut when the clutch basket is on. So you wanna go ahead and torque this down before you put it on. To do so, I'm gonna be using that gear jammer that I ended up cutting into a piece so I can actually stick it in here and get this torqued down. The balancer nut is torqued down to 100 foot-pounds and the crank nut is torqued down to 110 foot-pounds. Now, once those are torqued down, you can use a screwdriver to go ahead and bend the tabs out a little bit if they're not already. And you can use just a simple pair of channel locks to go ahead and bend them down onto the nut. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and install the clutch housing. You're gonna make sure that you put a little bit of oil on this bearing here and on the shaft before you install it. And when you're putting this on there, you might have to actually move the gears just a little bit to make sure it goes all the way on to make sure it meshes with the crank gear and the oil pump down below. You can verify that just by turning the engine over a little bit and making sure that uh, the oil pump drive actually turns along with the crank. Next is the thrust washer. Then you have the clutch boss that goes on next. And then I have a new lock washer. There's the part number if you need it for reference. Again, this one does have tabs as well that will lock in place on the clutch boss. And then the nut. Now you can take your clutch holding tool and put it on the clutch boss. And torque this nut down to 65 foot-pounds. And just like for the crank bolt and the balancer bolt, this one also has the tabs that you need to bend down. And now to go ahead and install the clutches, ever since I took mine out of the engine, I put them in this bag full of oil. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start off with my clutch boss positioned with the deepest hole at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate to that deepest hole. There it is right there. And starting off with the first clutch, this is just a normal friction disc, then a clutch disc, then you have the friction disc that has the little tab on either side of it. That goes next. Then you have this warped washer. You want to go ahead and put that on next. Then a clutch disc. Then a normal friction disc. A clutch disc. Normal friction disc. A clutch disc. A regular friction. Clutch disc. Regular friction. Clutch disc. A regular friction, clutch disc, 
And lastly, the other friction disc that has the tabs on both ends. So now we can take our pull rod, making sure that we still have the bearing on it and the washer if yours came with it. And then our pressure plate, which also has an indentation of an arrow pointing up. The arrow is supposed to line up with the deepest hole on your clutch basket. So when I'm putting this in, I wanna go ahead and face this off to the left hand side, which obviously you can move it once it's in there. But whenever I go to put the case on there, the rod for the clutch will line up with this on the left hand side. So that's the way that I'm gonna be putting this on here. And then you wanna make sure you grab all the springs and the screws that go with them and go ahead and put these in. And whenever you're tightening these down, make sure that you go little by little in a crisscross pattern on each one until you get them all down. And you wanna to torque these down to 5.8 foot pounds. All right, now that I've got all this torqued down, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is all clean. Put the two dowel pins in, I've got one already down in there. And go ahead and put the gasket on, put the case on and torque the case bolts down to 7.2 foot pounds. And that wraps up the series of the bottom end rebuild of the Raptor 660. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. And if you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe.